everybody, welcome in. It's Prep Zone Wrap Up Show. James Phillips here with Brett Elmore. Brett, um, it was a rough week in high school football. Yeah, a rough week in high school football. We were talking off the air. College football was a little rough, too. It's been a rough weekend altogether. But the cigars were smoked Saturday night, and the Braves make the World Series. It was a good Saturday. Right. And no mustard was thrown. And no mustard was thrown. No one harmed except for the Tennessee soul. Right, and we were very fine with that. Yeah. Somebody told me that uh, Alabama's going to have to start paying taxes in Knoxville because they own them. I... I, I, I'm sure they would probably gladly do that. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. 15 it, it, years in a row, man, that's something else. That, it really is. And But on the high school level, yeah, we we had uh, some pretty rough games, a couple of surprises, and uh, but, you know, for the most part, it kind of went the way we thought. We it thought, went. yeah. Let's, let's just go ahead and start with our game of the week. That sure. was Curry traveling to Gordo. Tough game for Curry. Gordo wins 42 to nothing. But, again, it's another one of those instances where the Yellow Jackets don't quit. They keep fighting. Um, and they held uh, Gordo scoreless in the fourth. Um, couldn't get any points on the boards themselves, but they, they just kept going, and that's, that's what you can say about this Curry team. Yeah, they keep fighting, and uh, Gordo, you know, a traditional power in high school football. They've shut out their last three opponents. Now, they have a matchup with Pickens County. I'd love to see that right. this coming week, but Gordo, just a traditional power. Uh, Curry, Wyatt Cook, uh, he kind of stood out defensively for them. I think he registered uh, uh, 10, ta uh, 10 tackles, I believe. He has 110 on the season. I know that much. He, he registered several tackles, right. uh, Wyatt did. Curry will uh, play West Point in the finale and uh, try to get ready for next season. That's but, right. but I think they've made progress, really. Even though the record doesn't indicate it, I think they made some progress. Yeah, I think they have as well. Um, let's talk about Jasper and Pinson. Pinson wins 49-27. But Jasper hung in there uh, for a half, especially. They were right in there at halftime. Uh, but just too much, too much power, too much speed from Pinson, and, and really too much of everything. Roster size, uh, experience, you know, everything was on their side. Well, when you look across the line of scrimmage, and, and they've done this several times this season, and see Division One prospects, I mean, the quarterback, uh, D1 guy, right. uh, I think he's uh, looking at Georgia Tech. But, yeah, the, just uh, outmanned. Trayvon Stewart had a really good game on, on the ground, uh, rushed the ball 36 times, 225 yards. He scored three touchdowns. Rosenfeld at quarterback, 12 of 17 passing, 191 yards with a touchdown. Did throw a pick in that game. And Kevon had a big night receiving uh, six catches, 111 yards, uh, and a score there for the Vikings. But they'll wrap up this week. They should win. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a Bessemer City team that averages a whopping seven points a game. <laughs> and, and, I and think they give up a lot more than that. They give up li literally over 40 a game. Right. So uh, this is a game the Vikings should win. It is a Thursday night, so do remember that. It's a Thursday night kickoff in Bessemer. But the Vikings, if they can win this, they'll finish up 500, and I think that's good with this schedule. Oh, when you look at this schedule, a 500 record, that's that puts Coach Bailey in the running for a Coach of the Year award. Yeah, and one of those losses, a forfeit. Right. You know, um, I, th I think they played well under, under the circumstances, and, and, and we were talking, I think, last week with him. I said, even the non-region opponents, when you're playing Mars Hill, uh -huh. when you're playing Coleman, when you're playing Demopolis, who won Friday night, um, you know, coupled with the region, a 500 record, I think, is pretty yeah. good. No cupcakes there, no. for sure. No. All right, let's go to um, Sullivan and Addison. Sullivan wins 21-7. to That was kind of a surprise. We all thought that Addison would pull out this win, uh, and they just seemed to struggle off offensively in this game. Yeah, they, they struggled, and um, I, I thought they would go out with a bang. This was their final game. They don't. They didn't have a game scheduled for this coming week. It was their bye week on the schedule, so... Uh, this is it for Addison. Christian Roberts had a pretty good game passing, 11 of 18 for 142 yards. He had a touchdown. Also, he threw for an interception, but he was good on the ground, too. Uh, he rushed the ball 17 yards for, or I mean, 17 carries for 60 yards. Um, Christian Roberts um, kind of stood out for Addison, but yeah, I hate the way they ended their season. Yeah, it's a rough go for Addison. They went through such a, it was a roller coaster season from, you know, Picking up wins over Haleville, picking up a win over Aliceville, 
And then injuries and COVID and all kind of things hit, and it just seemed like they stalled there during the middle middle of the season. And it's been a long time since they haven't made the playoffs. That's right. Yeah, I, mean, I, you know, when I, you, I went when, to look that up and yeah, I, looked it up. Uh, you know, and when you look at that bracket, you normally always look for Addison, mm -hmm. but not this year. That's right. Um, here's one that was a not very good game: Winfield 51, Carbon Hill zero. We kind of knew this going in. Winfield has been so impressive this year. It's probably the best team they've had in 20 years, and uh, nobody has even come close to stopping them. No, the Pirates are, are, are going to be a force to, to reckon with in the playoffs, and this is just how good Winfield is. If you look at the Carbon Hill stats, uh, these were your standouts. Devin Daniel rushed 17 times for 21 yards. Uh, Cam DeJesus receiving two catches, 18 yards. He did uh, pick off a, a pass, though, so he had a standout. Clay Tittle passing three of eight for 34 yards. Just couldn't get anything going in that ball game. But like I say, it's Winfield, and they're going to go a long way in the playoffs. Yeah, I think they're a team this year that's just poised to make that long playoff run. Right. All right, um, Cordova at Fairfield. Fairfield 46, Cordova 6. This one was another one that's just uh, kind of got out of hand early. It was 39 to 6 by halftime, and, and uh, Fairfield just kind of rolled to the victory. Yeah, I mean, not much you could say. Uh, there's a lot like Jasper, like we talked about on this program before. Uh, they're just not in the right classification, not in the right region. Um, but they're not going to make the playoffs, but this week is going to be their bowl game. This is their big one. All it's right. the rivalry game. Uh, against the Oakman Wildcats, and that'll be a big one. Yeah, they can uh, if they get, go out with a win over Oakman. And this is one of those strange rivalries where <sighs> the team that has the worst record a lot of times pulls off of an upset in this game. Yeah, I, I was looking at it during our uh, game day final on WJLX on Friday, and uh, I was looking at the streak. It has been such a streaky series. It'll go back and forth, and, and you're right. It, it seems like the team that's really not supposed to win – they do. Right. So that, that should be quite the interesting game to see this coming week. Center point, 26, corner seven. Corner's another one of those teams. They're, they're not going to the playoffs. They've only got two wins on the year. Um, and, and center point just really uh, took care of them from the beginning. Yeah, just a rough year. Like you say, two, two wins, not going to make the playoffs. They'll be getting ready for basketball. How about Lynn losing to Hubbardville 40-14? to It's been a tough year for Coach Hastings at Lynn. Yeah, it has been, and I talked to him before the season, and, and he knew it was going to be, you know, going to take some time there at Lynn. But once again, you Lynn fans, I wouldn't be too disappointed because he will get things heading in the right track probably next year. Because if you look at his track record everywhere he's been, he's won. Right. And, and he will do it because Lynn has – that mentality, they're, they're, they're a team that you've seen them win in the past. Yeah, they and, have that tradition. Yeah, they, and they'll do it again, and Coach Hastings will have them in the right direction. Um, Dora, they, they did what Dora does this year. They, they played Etowah as close as possible and lose 17-14. That was the score at halftime, and nobody scored in the second half. But, you know, Dora was right there uh, in these last few games, and now it looks like they'll be, they're going to be on the road definitely for the playoffs. Yeah, they're going to be on the road, and they're they're going to be taking on the one one seed. Was it Brooks? I think. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, on the road, they're undefeated and six in the state. Uh, talked with Coach Williams after the game Friday, and uh, very very frustrated. Um, his defense is playing well, right? Uh, good enough to win. His offense, he said, they're just tripping over themselves. Um, Jamarcus Goodman rushed the ball, twenty two carries, one hundred five yards, and two scores. But uh, yeah. They have, they have lost these close ball games. At least they've made the playoffs, but the thing is, they're in that fourth spot, and when you're in the fourth spot, you have to travel to a one seed somewhere. And like I say, in this instance, it's going to be undefeated Brooks. Right, and that's a tough road to start oh, God, with there. Man, you ain't kidding. Prep Zone Wrap-Up is presented by Bevel State Community College and Kilgore Green Funeral Home. Um, all right, Meek, one of our teams that did pick up a win, Meek 28 to 7 over Barry. Um, a little, it was kind of close for the first half. I yeah. think it was uh, 12 to 7 at halftime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but Meek kind of 
powers their way with this running attack they have and, and picks up them winning. And, and they're, they're looking to roll right now. Coach Houston Powell, he distributed the football uh, pretty evenly. Listen to this. Uh, you had Blake Miller, 87 yards on the ground. Cam Deaver, 83 yards on the ground with two scores. Matthew Clark, 87 yards on the ground. Um, so, yeah, he got the ball to several different players, um, so distributed the football very well. They, they are another team that's going to have to go on the road, though, in, right. the, in the opening round of the state playoffs, and they're going to have to make a trip to a very familiar territory for a lot of teams in 1A, and that being R.A. Hubbard, uh, the old Cortland. Uh, just travel north of Moulton, you'll be there. That's, you talk about tradition. You talking about tradition right there. These two teams have identical records going into the week this week, though. Right. Um, this is not the R.A. Hubbard of old, but still, it is Hubbard. But interestingly enough, Meek has won the last two meetings between these two teams. Uh, so, looking ahead to the playoffs, that's an interesting matchup in the first round. Definitely is. Okay, how about... Summerton Christian traveled to Valley Head. We really thought this was going to be Summerton revenge for them from last year, but Valley Head wins 49-21. I had a, uh, two different people contacting me saying that the officiating was pretty rough. Now, you never blame a loss on officiating, but they did have three touchdowns called back in the game. That's rough, and uh, that's what you're going to get in the road, uh, on the road, and, and, and especially in 1A football. Mm -hmm. You go to these little towns, they, they kind of like to – yeah, the mayor of the town is probably one of the officials. Right, yeah, I think he's, 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 he's the head, head referee. He's the white hat, and uh, then you have all the council members. They're, <laughs> right. they're, they're, the, they're the rest. But, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough night. This was the most shocking result of Friday night's action. Uh, Jack Gable, two rushing touchdowns um, in, in the game. Um, uh, you know, but not only did they lose, but just the way they lost and the score, it just really shocked me. But, yeah, three touchdowns called back. It's okay, though. Just breathe uh, because it, uh, they're still in the playoffs, um, and uh, they've got a big uh, game coming up this Friday against Meek, which is a huge game here in the Walmart area. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it will be. It will so. be. Um, how about Aliceville, 42, Winston County, 24. Winston County – was in this game really through three quarters. Aliceville scored two touchdowns late to pull away. Um, but I was surprised at how well Winston County did kind of hang in there. Yeah, they fought, and they fought hard. And they, they've had, uh, you know, a, a rough go at it this year. Riker Morgan uh, still had a great ball game, 165 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. He passed for 42 yards and another score. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they were in this thing, but they let it go at the end. Uh, just been a, a rough season for Winston County. Your story starts at Bevel State Community College. Whether you are just starting out or starting over, Bevel State has an opportunity that is right for you. With five locations serving seven counties, you don't have to go far to start your own success story. Plus, with tuition lower than four-year colleges, you won't need to spend more for a great education. Visit us online at bscc.edu to learn about your options for seamless academic transfer and high-demand career tech and health science offerings. Let us help you Tell your story. Right. I saved Oakman for last because they yeah. had our, our biggest blowout. Uh, Oakman wins 52 to 0 over Tarrant. And that was probably about what we expected, or maybe we might have thought the Wildcats would have scored more. Yeah, this one was uh, ugly. Caden Marchbanks ran wild in this game. Five touchdowns. He had four of those in the first half. And he scored in three different ways. Um, uh, he rushed four times, 64 yards and three scores. He returned an interception for a score, and then he uh, returned a kickoff for a touchdown. <laughs> and then Sean Douglas, he, he touched the ball twice and, and uh, for 120 yards, and then he scored two touchdowns. And Ryan Shepard got in the mix uh, three times, 197 yards on the ground, or excuse me, 97 yards on the ground and a score, but... Uh, that Oakman. Uh, I'd like to know what the overall yards per carry was for Oakman. No kidding. Because I mean, those guys are averaging uh, yeah. forty yards a carry. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I'd love to know what the total offense was. Yeah, in that game for Oakman, but uh, they're in a they're in a weird spot. They're gonna they're gonna host uh, the opening round game with Colbert Heights, which is not really a very good team actually, uh, but. They're in a spot this week where they have Cordova, and it's a rivalry game, and Cordova's going to come in and play very, very tough. Uh, one thing you don't want to do if you're Oakman, because your playoff bout is, is, is not get anyone hurt in this game, and because you still have the playoffs ahead of you. 
Right, that's right. You know, and this this next week, a lot of people say, you know, do you do you save some of your guys? Man. Do you not play all your starters? And I just in high school football, I don't think most coaches are going to go that direction. They're going to play their guys because you don't want them to get rusty from the last week to the first week of the playoffs. Right, and it, and if you're Oakman, even if Coach Hall wanted to do that, which he may, I don't know, but if he wanted to do that, he can't because it's Cordova. Right. Uh, so he's in a they're they're in a tough spot. I, I'd hate to be Oakman right now. Oh, I would too. But you know, there's and it, the the problem is with Oakman, there's nothing to win. You know, no. It's, <laughs> and man, it's everything for Cordova yeah. because they're not they're not in the playoffs. So this is their big game, right? And so that's a tough place for <laughs> yeah. the for the favorite to be in. Yeah, that that's point. exactly right. Well, Brett, anything else you got going on this week? Nope, we'll have uh, Jasper on the radio, of course, Thursday night on WJLX, and then uh, we'll have somebody Christian Meek on Friday night. So join us if you can't make it out to the games. That's right. Join us throughout the weekend. Always tune in to 101.5. They've got an uh, incredible program. I love the music. It, it goes from, you know, the... 50s to, to up till now, really. Yeah, yeah. We, and then on Sundays, definitely tune in for Bull Corey's Outlaw Country. That's because right. if you haven't listened to that, you are missing a treat. <laughs> that, that, that's how my Sunday afternoons are. And, and uh, you know, I have fun with that. Right. I have fun. That's all I can say. We have fun. And uh, at, the, at the Eagle, be sure to pick up uh, our new magazine that just came out this week, Walker Magazine. There's a great story in there on Josh Gates, who uh, recently tried to climb Everest, and that is uh, there's some incredible photos, and wow. just to, to hear the determination that he had. And the poor guy, he was, he was five hours from the summit, and they had to, to tell them they couldn't go any further because there were storms coming in, and they they wouldn't have another window to make it. So he he did not quit on his own. Mother Nature caused it, wow. uh, and and he told me he he's one day he's going back up there. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, golly, I hate that for him, but yeah, I I'm, I'm in no we're we're in no shape to climb. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not climbing. We, we can we can barely make it back out to the car. That's right, yeah. I, uh, especially this week. Yeah. The uh, and then also you know every Saturday check out the Eagles uh, football coverage. It's better than anybody in the states. I say it's better than anybody in the country as far as high school football coverage. Be able to be able to look up uh, dmeprepzone.com each week throughout the week. We'll have the the schedules and. Uh, previews and, and directions to the game and things like that. And then on Friday night, live scoring. And, and we uh, always uh, sponsor the scoreboard on the radio those nights as well. So, Brett, uh, I appreciate you coming in again. It's been fun this year doing the wrap-up show. With yeah, you. absolutely. I've, I've enjoyed it, and uh, we we have maybe a couple more weeks left. It's uh, always better to hang out with one of us than with Jonathan Bennett. That's right. <laughs> He's still celebrating a Braves win right now. Right, that's you right. Know. All right, guys, until next week, for Brett Elmore, I'm James Phillips. We'll see you then.